Good morning. Good morning. So I'll let the recommending, recommending meeting to order. Are we in compliance with the open meeting? Yes, sir. With that being said, I would like to move to the first line item on business, which is Bill Number 2011-44 for possible action establishing a parking program for qualified alternative fuel vehicles as required by state law. This bill is proposed by Bradford R. Jerbic, City Attorney, and William Arndt, Director of Economic and Urban Development. At this time, I would like to open up the floor to staff. Thank you. Good morning, Councilman. Uh, for the record, Bill Arns, Director, Economic and Urban Development. This bill has been mandated by Assembly Bill 511, uh, the 2011 session of the Nevada Legislature, and it requires the city as a local government to establish a program uh, for the operator of a qualified alternative fuel vehicle uh, to park the vehicle without paying a fee at certain times in public parking lots, parking areas, and metered zones. Uh, with me today is Brandy Stanley, our Parking Services Manager, and I'm going to let her just touch on the few points that the bill covers uh, to make sure that the city is complying with state law. Brandy? Thank you, Bill. Um, this program is basically a permit program um, as required by the state law that allows uh, Alternative fuel vehicles to park free of charge in any city owned or control in any city controlled parking facilities, including meters on the street. Um, the, the bill allows us to charge a $10 annual fee just to cover the cost of processing and issuing the permits. Um, we will, we are in the process of developing a program by which we verify that the vehicles themselves meet the criteria set forth by the state uh, prior to issuing the permits. This is supposed to be in place by January 1st. Uh, 2012 and we should be able to hit that deadline just fine um, there is I do want to point out that there is provision for uh, violation of this in terms of altered permits or permits being put on the wrong vehicle and that's either a misdemeanor or a civil violation of $500 anything else that's it question how do you know how, how do you know what is a qualified vehicle what decal or what certificate uh, we have ordered um, specialized permits for this there are a number of it's probably about three-quarters of a page of requirements that a vehicle must meet it must have four wheels it must be made by an original vehicle equipment an original equipment manu manufacturer um, or a qualified modifier um, it has to be manufactured primarily for use on public streets. It has to be less than 8,500 pounds. Uh, it has to maintain a maximum rate of 70 miles an hour. Uh, and it must be propelled to a significant extent by an electric motor, which draws electricity from a battery that has a capacity of not less than four kilowatt hours. And it, the list goes on, as you can understand. So we do need, um, we'll verify before we issue the permit that the vehicle that the vehicle meets all the requirements set forth in the state. So law. the parking lots would be would not just be city or public body owned parking lots, but perhaps other parking lots too. It would be any parking facility for which we charge a fee that we control, whether we own it or oh, whether okay. we lease right. it. So private parking lots are not required to that's correct provide free parking. Uh, was there anything in the provisions in that statute about uh, chargers for electric no. cars? No. Okay. My Chevy Volt that I just bought, that's going to qualify for this, I'll bet you. It will. Okay. This is great. That's the end of my questions. Okay. <laughs> I need to get your Chevy Volt. <laughs> well, <laughs> the gas is killing me. <laughs> um, question for you, Randy. Yes. From an enforcement standpoint mm -hmm. and a qualifying standpoint, mm -hmm. our staff, staff, city staff will make that determination. I mean, are do we have qualified staff to, in fact, look at every vehicle that comes in for this permit? How, what is the procedure for that? Well, and that's one of the things we're still developing. We're working with fleet, and our, our ideal situation is to have some sort of form that can be verified by the original equipment manufacturer. Um, we're still working on that with our fleet and um, with some of the original equipment manufacturers to put together something that will work and isn't going to be too onerous to either the city or to the people that are applying for the permit.
from an enforcement from an enforcement standpoint once a vehicle is issued a permit that license plate will be matched to that permit so the enforcement officers on the street if they so desire can match the permit number to the license plate of the vehicle while they're on the street if it doesn't match then there is something that needs to be researched further but the enforcement staff is not going to be responsible for determining whether a vehicle is eligible to have the permit that needs to be done when the permits issued so are, how soon do you anticipate the city side of the enforcement being up to speed because it seems as of right now that the ordinance will go into effect prior to the city being prepared to do the enforcement the city is this is a January 1st is a January 1st what right. from, it, for so from what, an enforcement point of view that? from an enforcement point of view we'll be ready to enforce it from a qualifying point of view we're still working we're still working on that but we're you know we'll be able to get it done by the end of December okay and for any correct me if my understanding is wrong but it's my understanding that the state puts the burden on local government to do the qualification if you will for what is all meets the requirements of the state law is that, that correct yes that is correct it was actually um in previous drafts of the bill it was the state's require it was the state's responsibility that has been changed uh, that was changed as part of the final passage to be the responsibility of the local authority so for instance the city could not rely on the state or dmv to do the to do the screening to what meets the standard or not correct the law that's correct so that means the city staff so has the onus on. of getting up to speed and what are measures or training we would have to do or put our staff through in order to qualify them to make that determination well the, the good thing about the state law is that it's very very specific um, and most of the and most if not all of the information can be found from the original manufacturer specifications on the vehicle so basically what we need to do is put together a form that can be checked off against the the OEM specifications for each vehicle OEM original equipment manufacturer like uh, Chevy in the case of Councilman Coffin's car or Nissan if you're talking about the Nissan Leaf Okay. So we don't think it's going to be too difficult. We just need to make sure that we put the form together correctly um, and that we can, it, it's easy to check off for, um, for, anybody, for whoever ultimately ends up doing the qualification. And you, you feel very comfortable that we're not putting the cart before the horse in regards to this ordinance and you being prepared and ready to go by January 1st so that if Councilman Coffin comes in and he states not that he would that his Honda Accord meets the qualification that staff is ready to make that determination as to whether that's true or false I, I am comfortable that we'll be ready okay more questions yes, here um, I'm not sure what qualifies which cars qualify for example um, do the hybrids qualify for this they do not they do not okay so the size of the battery though is a qualifier correct because four and a half kilowatt hour capacity could include some of those hybrids could it, it could but it, it also that yeah the state law says it needs to be um it needs to be primarily fueled by an alternate source and a I'm hybrid right. okay. doesn't qualify for that yeah i've used eight tenths of one gallon in the first month i've owned this car mm -hmm. driving 700 miles wow that's how much gas I've used. Yeah. But seriously, I mean, it is a serious thing in a sense. Uh, you got to make sure. And I don't know why, why do we need forms? We need to say that's a leaf, that's a bolt. It's okay. Well, and that's one of the things. One of the things that that we're looking at because mm -hmm. it is easy to pre-qualify a list of vehicles like the it's Nissan and the Volt. We've already, you know, I've already done the research. I know they qualify. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some that may be lesser known, lesser known vehicles that we do need to that we need to do need to qualify individually. It just could be a lot of uh, it could be a lot of expense here creating forms, creating decals, and so on. Whereas uh, you know we just leave it up to the intelligence of our enforcement team out there that it's a qualifying vehicle because you you, you know you don't allow Priuses but you do allow uh, Volts and Leafs and whatever else comes along on, on the list. I'm sure, there's other plugins out there. Mm -hmm. 
Tesla. I love it. Um, secondly, I don't see in your language on the limitation of the time. For example, let's suppose we've got a parking lot that we need to move cars in and out, and maybe an hour is our maximum, two or three hours is our max. Now, how do we make sure that the inventory turns over? Um, that literally looks like free all-day parking. The, um, they are subject to the same time limits as any as any other vehicle char as any other vehicle parking in there. There would be. But how do you say it's 070? But if we charge per hour, I can understand if you've got a one or two hour limit on a street, mm -hmm. but in a lot where you charge by the hour. Mm -hmm. We don't have a maximum number of hours, do we, except maybe eight? That's correct. So what's to prevent people from just hogging the spaces as these cars come along? It will be coming mm -hmm. along. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, what if people start to use it as their daily parking? The, the state law does not allow us to limit that. Does not allow what? It doesn't allow us to limit that. They, any vehicle parking into this program is subject to the same time limit. So, in other words, we would have to change the time limit on any particular lot um, for everyone, not just not just these type of this vehicles. This becomes an unintended consequence they didn't foresee. I that's, wonder. That's a good point. Um, in the event, let's just say everyone in the city goes out and what type of vehicles do you have? Well, I have a Chevy Volt. Chevy Volt. But they're expensive. They're not going to proliferate. But right. But I'm just saying if everyone switches over, I mean, that in the long run now plays on our income revenue that we currently pull in today, right? You're correct, Council. Wow. Wow. That, maybe this isn't a good ordinance for the sake of fees in the long run, but... I, I see the direction in which this state um, is going and understand why. But from a revenue standpoint, I mean, we, we, how much do we generally bring in from a meter standpoint approximately annually? Uh, the meters on the street bring in about $1.2 million. Um, the uh, off-street parking facilities, uh, they're close to half a million dollars a year. Wow. So over a period of time going into the future, we could possibly continue to eat at that revenue stream. And do we have an alternative to replace that from a city general fund standpoint? Mr. Arndt? Uh, Councilman, I think it's a good question. I, I think we may need to craft a, a global solution. If it starts to, if the alternative fuel vehicle starts to become a, a big portion of the market, you know, 5, 10, 15 percent, I think we need to start looking at an alternative solution. For instance, maybe there's a, a way to pass on a benefit to the consumer with registration fees at the DMV to encourage use of alternative fuel vehicles that doesn't relate to parking. But how does so, that, how does that keep the city of Las Vegas whole from well, its revenue? If, if the intent of this ordinance standpoint. is to benefit the, the the end users of these vehicles, there's ways to do it other than through parking. So that's what I'm suggesting. That you think about the annual parking costs of somebody owning a, a Volvo, even if you're a patron of downtown like a councilman is, that's, your, that's just a small portion of your annual right. budget to maintain the vehicle. So I think there are other ways to skin the cat, so to speak, that, but that uh, would be appealing to... Uh, the legislature. Yeah, I was just going to say that we have to basically take something like that as it relates to the DMV back to the legislature for other alternatives. But now you're eating at the state budget. You know, councilman. So I mean, either way, you're. you, well, you know, I, yeah, you're someone's think, going to lose from, a, from an income generating standpoint. I, it's, that's a good point. I, I think we have to do our homework, and if there's less cost to the state in registering those vehicles, uh, such as monitoring uh, emissions and things like that. Maybe there's maybe there's a global solution that is revenue neutral or close to revenue neutral for Correct. the states. So that, that's something we'll have to roll up our sleeves and do some homework in and I think probably over the next two or three sessions we'll have some yeah. time to do that. And you know, understanding that, you know, by the time all of the uh, electric vehicles roll out, you know, I know I won't be sitting on the council and possibly not even uh, Councilman Coffin, because of 
you know, the time in which it would take to get that many cars into into the system. Um, but for future councils, um, you know, I, you know, looking forward, I, I can see that can be, you know, something of a concern for future councils coming. In council, what we can do is um, monitor, of course, and do our lobbying team for the legislature and just give them an update if it's having a negative impact fiscally on our budget. It's kind of important. Maybe they can tweak the <coughs> ordinance or the NRS that puts the same restrictions on hours of parking like regular parking. And there's there's things that we can mitigate at the legislature if we just go out there and just start monitoring exactly the impacts it has on the city. Yeah. Do we know, Brandy, how many vehicles, how many electric vehicles that qualify that are currently in the state, or I should say the city of Las Vegas, Clark County proper? We can probably find that out from DMV records, but what I can tell you is that the last statistics I read on the sales of uh, lease and bolts nationwide, it's less than 3,000 combined. So there are not very many vehicles of these on the road anywhere, um, which is why it's not necessarily, at this point, going to be a huge revenue loss. However, right. If they do gain in popularity over time, then we're probably well, going to I mean, just the fact that the councilman just shared with me that he drove over 700 miles and didn't even use, you know, two Slurpee cups of uh, gas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's attractive. You're coming here at second. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. We could move forward with this. Yes. It's the record keeping suggestion yeah. by Deputy, uh, excuse me, well, Deputy or Assistant City Manager, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Titles, sorry, Orlando. We, we, we should, for the purpose of lots primarily, I think look at uh, keeping track of how many have been occupying these because there are a handful of volts, a handful of leaves, mm -hmm. and some of them are already parking exempt. Like my car as a council member is parking exempt at a mm -hmm. lot. But um, at least I think it is. Now it's on yeah, the street, yeah. it's exempt. But uh, I think we should record as much as we can anecdotally, if not mm -hmm. perfectly accurately, what's going on because uh, I can see somebody with a bolt then coming in or leave and coming into a parking lot mm -hmm. and taking it for the full eight or nine hours that they are yeah. there working and there'd be no turnover. So all of a sudden you've lost a spot for a business, for a tourist oriented or a com local commercial business of some kind. And that, you know, that can become a precious lot. I think for the next 15 months till the next legislative session goes, we could live with this but with good record keeping, we could seek an amendment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that, that we could get an accommodation somehow. Well, we better think about it, how, how we would want to get an amendment before we start changing our signs, because we might have to say maximum number of hours that anybody can park. And then you get into real problems. And now you're paying customers who might leave. So, mm -hmm. and just uh, Councilman, I'll just throw this out, and Randy may want to comment on this. I know in some other garages around the country they're starting to incorporate charging stations in the garages. Mm -hmm. So there's a, way, there's a way to treat that customer uh, as a preferred customer without delving into uh, changing rates for, for the vehicles and, and providing things like charging stations to show that we're a sustainable city. So I think there are other business practices we could, we could look at as a city. I know this may be a little bit off the topic in regards to the charging stations, but do the charging stations charge, or is that free, if you know? Um, they can be set up either way. Um, the, there are several charging stations that are going in over at the new City Hall complex. Okay. Um, there are no plans to charge for charging there. So, okay. I can see, Mr. Chairman, in the beginning we, it's free, but, but, but we should adopt technology that allows us to charge. It's, it's not expensive, but it's important uh, that people understand that the use of the gas is not the only use of hydrocarbons. It's at the source creating the electricity. In fact, it costs me approximately uh, five cents to drive here from my home because I use 600, I'm in all my I use 600, I use 500 watt hours to get here. Wow. Half a kilowatt, which is at 11 cents a kilowatt, you yeah. know, it's about five or six cents. So, but that at the source, some power plants creating a little hydrocarbon somewhere for that car. So, we should start charging for charging stations. Okay. But being that that's not the that's topic not the of uh, the agenda today, <laughs> I would go ahead and move. <laughs> you know what, Mr. Yes, Chairman? Sir. I would go ahead and move for yes. approval of this said ordinance. We're we we understanding. We have administrative things we can do yeah. to help mitigate any unforeseen 
circumstances. This bill was passed in the last minutes of the legislature with a high number like that. Mm -hmm. and they didn't think about everything that went happen. Right. And I just want to just put that on the record so that there would be a starting point to th um, um, for future council members to basically reflect on and go back to the minutes um, to know that, you know, it, it was something that we were thinking about, mm -hmm. meaning that I know that as the um, Brandy mentioned, the, we won't see a, a drop in any revenue anytime soon, being that the approximate total is 3000 um, But as they come online, that can be very attractive um, if, in fact, the gas prices continue to escalate. You will start to see more and more people look for alternative fuel yeah. use. So with that being said, if, in fact, this bill, uh, Councilman, <coughs> And uh, those of you in the audience, if this bill number 2011-44 is moved out of committee today, it will be eligible for adoption on the December 21st City Council meeting. So with that being said, um, did you already place your motion? I did make a motion. Okay, uh, would you repeat it, please? Well, it is just simply not to amend, just simply to move, but uh, do pass bill number 2011-44. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm so comment? sorry. Um, prior to us moving forward with uh, the motion, uh, this Testimony. is yeah, <laughs> this is uh, the time for discussion of this item. If there's anyone wishing to speak on this item, please come forward and state your name for the record. Be glad to hear from you. Thank you, Todd Farrell, 240 North Longview Street. There might be a concern if you name certain item, uh, certain cars that. That, uh, that are approved for this because some people may modify cars. I know two guys that are modifying their vehicles now. So with a nameplate, that wouldn't make any difference. Hmm. Good point. Okay. Well, we haven't taken a motion yet. But administratively, um, that can be done because in the statute and in the ordinance, you're talking about the kilowatt hour capacity of the battery. Okay. So if you take a Prius and create it into a plug-in, uh -huh. you achieve that. So perhaps the idea would be to be accommodate that. And it is, that is provided for within the state law. It says it, it needs to be modified by uh, uh, the state name for the record. Brandy Stanley, uh, parking manager. The vehicle needs to be made by either an original equipment manufacturer or a qualified vehicle modifier of alternative fuel vehicles. So, so we would at that point have to qualified. go back to the to the company that actually did the modifications on the vehicle mm -hmm. and look to them for verification of compliance. So if in fact to address Mr. Farlow's uh, comments, if in fact someone were to um, alter their vehicle in order to qualify, and it's not a part of the OEM, mm -hmm. um, then in fact that wouldn't qualify that vehicle. Is that what you're saying? What it, it would have to be, we would have to go back to the to the company that did the modification to verify that the vehicle after modification does comply with the state laws. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item? So please come forward to state your name for the record. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I just wanted to point out that... Um, and you are? Uh, Val Steve, Deputy City Attorney. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this, uh, the, the state law has a sunset clause that expires in six years, and so we've made ours do that as well. And I think the reason okay. that is probably because there was concern about the impact mm -hmm. um, as more and more of these vehicles are, are on the road. So. So we have made, we have, we have tracked that, and this, unless, unless it's extended, this would expire on January 1st of 2018. That's section 5 on page 4. I didn't see that. Oh, wow. Okay, there's my concerns addressed right there. Thank you. You should have said that before. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I got that impression well, once the meeting wore off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the sunset language, what line was that on? Because the sunset yeah. language is not, yeah, it's, it's, I'm just used to, uh, it's I think a little different from that. Yeah. Okay. So, if there's no further I'll start. No further I'll start. Okay, so when it says, unless extended by ordinance, it's the city of Las Vegas ordinance, not the state. Right. In other words, if we decided on our own to extend it, mm -hmm. even if the 
we could do that, or if the state extended it, then we would also extend it. But I think the default is if nothing happens, it expires in 2018. Is this also reflective of the state? Yes. Is, yes. Is, so this is the expiration date of the state, so we're basically following the state. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm totally mm -hmm. fine with it. Okay. Uh, there is a motion on the floor. If there's no one else willing to speak at this time, I'll close public comment. Um, there is a motion on the floor for do pass. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. We're now down to bill number 2011-45 for possible action updates provisions regarding the Senior Citizen Advisory Board and repeals provisions establishing the Animal Advisory Committee Management Committee for Emergency Operations, Records Management Committee, Citizens Priority Advisory Committee, and Yucca Mountain Nuclear Repository Committee. This is proposed by Beverly K. Bridges, City Clerk. Staff? Um, I'll defer to the City Attorney if he has any other comments, but basically I think it, it's, it's a housekeeping bill. It, uh, allows the Senior Citizens Advisory Board to be brought into consistency with the newly adopted bylaws that they just adopted at their December 1st meeting. Um, it also repeals sections involving the Emergency Management Operations the Committee, the Records Committee, the Management Committee. Those are city boards which um, we anticipate either have it for a while or don't uh, don't appear to need the structure they currently exist so we're looking to restructure them, streamline them, simplify them. And then lastly is the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Repository Committee which is a city committee that it has been replaced or was running um, consistent with or, or at the same time that there was a state committee and uh, in effect the, uh, the city committee ceased meeting and Councilman Wilson had, uh, as the current appointee, had inquired about resolving it. Councilwoman Tarkinian sits on the state committee. And that pretty much is it. Okay, and does any of these speak to the elimination of uh, boards or commissions in which the City of Las Vegas no longer um, need, per se? This, this would dissolve by removing the uh, text from the code. It would e eliminate the emergency operations, the records, and the animal control, or the animal advisory committee. Okay, beautiful. All right. Um, is, is there anyone wishing to speak on this item? I'll open up for public comment before we take uh, council comments. Anyone from the public? If so, please come forward and state your name for the record. Seeing none, public co comment is public. Comment is closed. Councilman? I have comment on this, uh, Mr. Chairman. I can't support the ordinance with the removal of the uh, Yucca Mountain Advisory Committee on this. And the reason is, is, is that the exact term, nuclear repository committee. It's not an advisory committee. It's a committee that states the, uh, and should, should be active, and should state the position of the city. And uh, we've been fighting this issue for 30 years. And uh, there was a reason 19 years ago that the city adopted this. I don't really care if there is a state committee. You know, we've got our own interests here. State committees are uh, populated by people that don't care about something like that, particularly Clark County. You know, there's a, a tendency to just rub our eyes uh, uh, on issues. Uh, we care deeply in this community about this, particularly the transportation through the city of Las Vegas in order to reach the test site or the Yucca Mountain repository. Mm -hmm. And the issue is definitely alive. In fact, one of the members of Congress right now, Congressman Amade, he's for the, for the thing. And I, I tell you what, uh, message has been the issue of every time we make a move in this state or any entity, I don't care if it was a little county like Nye, which years ago said we'd like to, it upset the whole apple cart and it, it ruined a lot of work the state had done and, and gave new life to the hundreds and hundreds of lobbyists that work for the nuclear power industry and for the investor-owned utilities around the country that have, you know, that have nuclear power plants. So I really believe the message we would send would be incorrect by doing this. It may be symbolic in some people's minds, 
but I think this, this committee should be active and shouldn't just be whittling it because there is a purpose. And I've fought this issue so many years. I know, and I've got the scars to prove it, that, that if a city repeals something as meaningful as this, it will have an impact beyond our borders. You have to trust me on that. Um, so I could support the bill if we amend out the repealer on the Yucca Mountain Committee. Okay. I have a question. Who's on the committee, the Yucca Mountain Committee? And, ha and how often have they met? Uh, currently, the city representative is uh, Councilman Wilson, and the last meeting was, um, it's been a while since I did the research, off the top of my head, I believe it's almost four years. Hmm. Would you like to be appointed to the committee? <laughs> I'll take it. Sure. It's the one day committee. Well, it sounds like, you know, it's not going to have to meet a whole lot, but the point is... Well, no, stuff. once every four years is great. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not that much. It's the most important thing you have to rise to an occasion. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's yeah. an occasion you have to rise to, and you better have the committee to do it. Mr. Uh, Chair, if, 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 if I may? Uh, yeah, you may if you state your name for the uh, record. For the record, Ted Olivas, <laughs> Director of Administrative Services. Uh, this is one of the committees that, that I've been responsible for uh, since being at the City of Las Vegas. Uh, clearly, so you have fault for not meeting, but once every four years. Well, <laughs> clearly, Yucca Mountain is uh, one of the top items on our federal agenda, uh, and at uh, the state level as well. It, it uh, is very clear that the city of Las Vegas uh, has been and will continue to be opposed to this, whether it's the transportation of nuclear waste through our community or uh, nuclear testing uh, or. or uh, uh, waste storage uh, in at the test site and at Yucca Mountain. So um, this has been around for a long time. This does not change uh, our our position or our ability or your ability uh, to seek updates uh, from staff. Uh, in fact, we have a, an update next month. We receive a, an annual update. The effort that that. Uh, we put into this is kind of a, a cooperative effort uh, through all the jurisdictions in Southern Nevada, so it includes uh, Clark County, uh, Henderson, and North Las Vegas. Um, we work closely with the state uh, with the federal actions that are taking place, but uh, this in, in no means is intended to somehow circumvent or change the, the position that you have or uh, eliminate your, your uh, ability to inquire about our efforts. But uh, for the record, uh, we are uh, vehemently opposed to all of the activity uh, up at Yucca Mountain as it relates to the nuclear waste. We continue to be we'll, um, and will continue to provide updates through our federal plan, through our lobbying with the federal delegates uh, and through Vicki Cram as well. Um, it was mentioned earlier that there is a state committee that uh, Councilwoman Tarkanian is on. Um, so essentially, uh, th this committee is, is redundant. So it, it doesn't change anything. It just essentially eliminates a meeting. Uh, and it doesn't change uh, our, our position on it or your ability to receive uh, updates uh, from, from the city manager's office and myself on this over time as we have done since I've been here. Okay, so a couple questions for you, Ted. One, uh, what was the purpose for the establishment of the Yucca Mountain Committee? And two, um, why haven't this committee met on a, on a regular basis? Um, to answer your first question, uh, at the time, uh, there, there was the feeling that the city needed to be more active in in the Yucca Mountain discussions. Uh, since that time, uh, I don't know exactly how it was in 1992, but um, we are active in that to the extent that, that we can be. Um, in terms of why we haven't meet, uh, met is there's been no reason to meet. Uh, the, the updates that we receive, uh, anytime there's any federal action on it, um, we receive uh, updates either uh, through the county or through Vicki Cram, and you're provided updates ongoing, as opposed to having a, 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 a meeting that then forwards information to you. You're kept up to date you know, through briefings 
and uh, through our ongoing efforts as it relates to Yucca. So, in essence, you're taking out the middleman, which is the Yucca Mountain Committee, mm -hmm. and the information that we receive comes specifically from the lobbyists in Washington, D.C., whom we pay mm -hmm. to keep us briefed and updated as it relates to any federal uh, legislation that would impact um, the state of Nevada, and in particular, the city of Las Vegas. That's correct. As well as the statewide committee and, and our relationship with the state group um, and our efforts with Clark County. And, uh, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, Clark County uh, coordinates the effort on a regional, on a, a regional basis, so our efforts uh, as it relates to this are provided to you in updates uh, throughout the year, if there's any major. And the committee in which the councilwoman sits on the state board, is that a board that she's appointed and ratified by the council, or is that a board that she sits on on a personal uh, level? Uh, it's done through the, the appointments. It, it, it's, it's, it's done through the state. It's not an appointment through the city council. Mm -hmm. But um, the other, uh, that comes directly through. It's, the appointment, as I understand it, as it was explained to me when I spoke to the state, is um, Lois Tarkanian, but the reason Lois Tarkanian was selected was because she is the councilwoman from the city of Las Vegas. So okay, so they needed a, a representative, rookie, the state needed a representative from each local municipality, and Councilwoman Tarkanian was the selected appointee to represent the city. That's correct. Okay. I believe right. that's a governor's appointment. I think that's what I was told. And the other thing is that um, when Ted is talking about the uh, the cutting, or you, I think you said it, cutting at the middleman, a lot of these presentations are going directly to council, and then the council's direction is going directly back to the lobbyist, as opposed to going through uh, a subcommittee or a board that is created with one representative on it from the council. This way it's going to all the members of the council and the council's direction is all the members are directing back to. And I think that that's a big part so of why they in have essence, that in that time period. In essence, we're looking to streamline the process. Correct. Yeah. You're going to receive the same updates from, from myself and Vicki Cram and the state whether this committee exists or not. Okay. So it's streamlined the process okay. as you mentioned. Council? I move to uh, amend and do pass bill number 2011 45 with the removal of language relating to repeal of the Yucca Mountain. Okay. Nuclear Repository Committee. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Aye. So it automatically moves forward with a recommendation of no recommendation no right. to the full council. Okay. Yes, sir. Val Steed, Deputy City Attorney. Yes, sir. <laughs> for, the All right. Right. Yeah. for the record. I <laughs> would <laughs> like to propose that the, um, the amendment that goes forward um, with no recommendation also, one, one minor change, I should have spoken earlier. Um, there we, we identified in the interim one section of the uh, Title IX of the code that relates to transportation of hazardous materials through the city. The emergency committee uh, receives those reports, and if we do away with reference in the code of the emergency committee, we would need to add that section just to indicate that that report would then go to the Office of Emergen Emergency Management rather than to the committee um, and so for purposes of sending it on to the council without a recommendation I would like to at least have it be in a, an amendment form that, that then they could vote on that up or down if that works we couldn't do that at the council we could do it sure. at the council yeah. okay we can do that then. okay all right we'll, do, we'll just use it for our for informational purposes then today okay okay and oh we skipped the public comment. <coughs> Okay, then I apologize. Um, we do have, um, we are down to the section or skip the section of public comment. Um, if there's anyone wishing to speak on this item from the public, please come forward and state your name for the record. Thank you. Todd Parlow, 240 North 19th Street. Councilman Coffin, I support you on the Yucca Mountain 
advisory committee. We need that because as many eyes and ears is on the ground as possible, it's better. The second thing that you bring to the table is a perspective of a person that sat in the legislature, and we need that too, and I think that's important because you're the people that will, the, the legislature is the people that we're trying to get through our, our point across too. And if, if Councilman Coffin has had much experience over there, say that, that this would look better in, in our terms to have a advisory committee. I support that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item? So please come forward and say your name for the record. Seeing that, thank you. Um, we are now down to, well, this um, bill number 2011-45 um, has, <coughs> excuse me, has been moved out of uh, committee on the vote of um, no recommendation, and it will be eligible for further conversation and amendment and possible adoption at the December 7th City Council meeting. Okay? So, with that, we are now down to citizen participation. Anyone from the public wishing to speak during this portion, please come forward and state your name for the record. Seeing that, Councilman? I move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that moves to do pass to the full council. <laughs> 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 Thank you all.